Hello, yeah. Hi, Naman. Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. Yeah, hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Okay, so let's wait for one, two minutes and then we can start the session. Sure. Yeah. So let's start our today's session. So uh, in today's webinar, we are going to discuss about the unleashing the power of chat GPT a data science perspective. So hello everyone and welcome to our new chapter of College Dunya Connect. And my name is Pooja Vadwa and I'm the program manager of the advanced certification in data science and engineering program in association with e and ICT Academy and IIT Patna and powered by College Dunya. So our today's masterclass topic is unleashing the power of chat GPT, a data scientist perspective. So in the today's masterclass, we will explore the capabilities, capabilities of chat GPT from a data scientist perspective and examine how it can be used to enhance decision making and drive innovation. So to enlighten more on this part, we would like to welcome our guest speaker for today's webinar, Mr. Naman Pandey. So welcome Naman, we are glad to have you here today and we are keen to listen to your views. Yeah. Thank you, Pooja. I'm yeah. glad to hear us. Yeah. So, shall I start? Yes, yes. You can start from your introduction. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, let me share my PPT first. I hope it is visible, right? Uh, yes, it's visible. And for the audience, you can write all your doubts and queries in the chat uh, chat box, and Naman will answer all your queries. Okay, guys. A very warm good evening to everyone. So we have curated this fantastic uh, deep drill on how we can use ChatGPT and how I have been using it for all the tasks that I do in my day-to-day -day life uh, as a data scientist. Yeah. So humans have seen a lot of evolution or evolution I would say since the time we have actually gathered our uh, consciousness a very great quote from Neil Armstrong was that it's one small step for a man one giant leap for a man time this this was said when he first landed on the moon and uh, he took his first step this this is a very strong statement as because since then humans have witnessed a lot of revolutions happening that has changed entirely how humans have thought and how we have been living in this earth First evolution came in the form of semiconductor industry, where uh, we we started to put small transistors, and that revolutionized how we have our computer systems in our home. We were able to process large amount of data. We were able to uh, get things done quickly and uh, very swiftly. So it it reduced our efforts from let's say hundred to twenty. Then then as we discovered internet uh, so air force of uh, united states of america they designed this world wide web, uh, world wide web that is more commonly known as internet and from there we have witnessed a lot of websites and startups coming um, coming to this world to to, to, to their existence like amazon and uh, mintra as uh, somebody some some might be using Blinkit, all these startups again changed our life from uh, uh, doing things, going to the stores to ordering everything that you want on uh, online and getting it delivered in a single day time period. As we talk, now world is witnessing another form, uh, another form of revolution that is coming in form of artificial intelligence. This has actually a lot of capabilities and as we have all witnessed or we maybe we will be uh, we are absorbing that observing that a lot of things have changed uh, surrounding to us a lot a lot of uh, ai implementations how we have been using chat gpt and this whole ppt has been curated on this topic which will be shedding some light on how we can utilize this uh, this ai revolution and be part of this massive uh, infrastructural development or changes that we are currently witnessing. So yeah, 
good evening everyone i'm naman pande i'm a, i'm working as a data scientist in accenture and ha- i have almost 4 years of experience um i have listed few of my top uh, projects that uh, that i have done over the time period so i i believe that they they are some something that are very relevant to uh, to you to understand what what background i come from and how i have been using artificial intelligence and deep learning machine learning uh, throughout my career as a data scientist i have been uh, i have designed this pricing model for maruti suzuki that is that uh, that is currently available in all the true value sections of uh, maruti suzuki for those who don't know true value true value is is a segment of maruti suzuki where they sell and buy uh, second hand cars so when when you walk into that store uh, or or any outlet of true value you will you will find a uh, uh, an evaluator who will who will go through all the car details like if you uh, what what is the mileage of your car how old it is how how many users uh, it has had and all, all these irrelevant information this he will feed in his uh, tablet and when as soon as he uh, taps on the submit button he will get a quotation that is auto generated using different machine learning models so this model i have created and this has been successfully running in the backend of maruti suzuki uh this is interesting because a lot of analysis that i've uh, came across in the in the due period and the due course of how uh, i'm uh, how uh, analyzing the data uh one interesting fact was that uh, uh, any car that you buy um, so if 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 you're selling your car right and uh, if if it is not old than uh, an year old so uh, that car will be valued less than if a car is val- uh, is is an is older version of or let me just rephrase it so a car uh, that is that has an age of one year or less will be valued lesser than the car which is uh, older than one year so this could be this is this is actually a very interesting find because that reflects how an indian uh, thinks this could be that an ideal idea could be that uh, uh, that any car that is that is being sold uh, within one one years of time is is a car that uh, that has some kind of uh, malfunctioning in it or uh, some kind of uh the owner must be uh, having some kind of uh, difficulty paying the emi or something like that so a leverage would be totally uh, a leverage could be made out of that uh, second second was sales decomposition model this was delivered to mcdonalds where there we were trying to uh, identify how a mcdonalds should invest their money into different sections of food items that will increase their revenue so there we uh, there we promised mcdonalds that will be contributing more than 15 million dollars in their revenue and that we did actually and uh, and mcdonalds has been using this this model to segregate how much they want to inv- uh, invest on their burgers or fries or uh, or let's say uh, different skews that they are selling over their stores and the third one the pla- plan rationalization for telecom is the latest one that i have been uh, working on recently it's a it's a telecom project uh, there we are suggesting a play a telecom player like airtel to uh, to have a plan or uh, let's say they have designed some thousand plans for them and these thousand plans uh, could be a prepaid recharge or a postpaid recharge and they don't know how to how to utilize them properly they they only know that this is the target customer that they have been targeting but over over the due course of time it has uh, the number of plans has really exceeded their uh, manual capacity to rationalize them when i say rationalize i mean uh, the plans that they are not generating any any further revenues and are not good for uh, health of the company but still they are running because uh, somebody is uh, some years back created that uh, plan so a very interesting project that i have been doing and this is this is again gives you an insight of what what deep learning and uh, machine learning implementations are into a corporate world experience um to uh, move forward i would request you to uh, scan this qr code that i have shared on uh, on the screen 
you can you can directly go on instagram and maybe search for ai with naman you'll you land up to my page directly there i am sharing the interview tips and techniques what you can use what interview questions have been asked and all the relevant information you can directly dm to me and ask questions if you have any confusions regarding any of the topics or anything that you are not able to grasp properly so um, that that will be really beneficial for your growth and uh, if you are aspiring for data science it will be very relevant uh, for your uh, career right objective of this presentation will be would be to talk about what's the technology that is running behind chat gpt and how how we can use chat gpt as as a tool that enhances our own efficiency and uh, works hand to hand in hand with humans we'll be also talking about how uh, to have a leash over all these machine learning or artificial intelligence tools uh, so that in the future we don't encounter any instance where uh, machine machines or artificial intelligence uh, try to take over humans life and uh, they control our life that that actually we don't want and so i'll be talking about what things we can keep in mind doing all those stuff right okay. yeah so uh, just to give you a big brief reference of how and uh, where the chat gpt basically comes from you will have to understand that there are two broad branches of artificial intelligence first is computer vision uh, that corresponds to the vision or uh, the eyes that you perceive through your um, uh, the world that you perceive through your eye so that that uh, that implementation of ai is called computer vision so if if you see this kid his name is pogu and he has been he has uh, recently taken birth so he is some let's say 6 months old he is witnessing everything from his eyes and his ears so everything that he grabs or perceives is is kind of stored in a form of data in his mind and as he grow older he try to acknowledge all the information that he is getting from uh, from his mother or his parents basically this this approach is called training uh when you teach a little kid how to do certain stuff that is training i'll be referring to training a lot so i'm just giving you uh um uh, <laughs> i would say uh, i'm just giving you a, a warning or such a warning that these technical terms i'll be using in, in my presentation next if you if you point out pogu's ear so that is the part where natural language processing comes into the play natural language processing is also the backbone of how chat gpt works when we say natural language processing it could be of uh, how how you hear things how you uh, understand what's going around um, around your uh, around your surroundings i'll be going deeper into natural language processing but i just wanted to play this uh, a very simple yet very effective implementation of computer vision and uh, how how computer vision is changing the world is kind of clear from this video uh, this is from fifa world cup that recently happened and uh, unfortunately my uh, favorite team france didn't win this world cup but nevertheless we were able to design this model that would essentially tell where the uh, where this uh, football player will be shooting his ball uh, this is more like the chakdi incident that you must have seen uh, earlier in your life where uh, sharukh khan is standing and uh, he is uh, sim- uh, signaling to vidya that okay stop that uh, the uh, the striker is going to strike right in front of you uh, this is something like that let me just play for your reference yeah so if you see here uh this is a second my bad so there is a probability given by the model that 74% chances are there that it will be hitting on the left corner of the uh, goal post and so it did 
similarly another another instance where the player is trying to kick and the model is predicted that 59% chances are there that it will be shooting on the left corner of the goal post though it was not the correct goal shoot that i would say but yeah the prediction was right yeah the goalkeeper was able to stop the ball from uh, going to the goal post yeah so that was an implementation of competitive vision i just wanted to uh, go through it uh, briefly because uh, that is also a very exciting field everything from self driving cars to surveillance that you uh, uh, that uh, that uh, that the government keeps on us is is a part of competitive vision so when we talk about surveillance it could be uh, that traffic uh, traffic cameras that you see on the streets if 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 a particular vehicle crosses the zebra crossing the camera is able to assess what is the number of that car even it can it it will be able to uh, uh, capture what's the speed of the car and all those things that all implementation falls under purview of computer vision yeah coming back to the topic of natural language processing natural language processing is also a very fantastic and fast growing impl- uh, implementation of artificial intelligence a lot of research has been uh, has has surfaced recently and a lot of ground breaking architectures have come into being uh, where where we are able to um, decipher all the languages that we speak into and how how the world communicates uh, we are trying to put this kind of intelligence into a machine so that a machine is able to uh, perform the task that a human can do uh some something like uh, 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 a a human speaks uh, a secretary or a receptionist when you walk into a very fancy hotel or a restaurant so there uh, uh, we can we can surely put uh, 10 years down the line we can surely put a human that can interact uh, uh, a robot that can interact with all the precision that a receptionist does so uh example of natural language processing is something that is that uh, that has Uh, that is part of uh, all the households as of now alexa amazon alexa that you must be aware of or if you have not heard it, they, these are just very smart speakers that uh, that interacts with you that gives you information about the weather how how uh, the world is around you how the temperatures have fallen or or play your favorite song or uh, uh, do a lot of stuff for you speech recognition is one one of the kind of natural processing language translation when you when you uh, open your google app and when you speak to it or or you write to it that uh, i want uh, uh, that uh, if you write uh, a sentence that i love uh, india and you want it converted into mandarin or chinese language so that ra- language translation is a process that also comes from natural language processing then there is text summarization sentiment analysis uh, a very good impl- uh, application of sentiment analysis is using twitter you can you can it's a it's a very easy project you can uh, do is you can download uh, last 500 tweets that uh, that twitter actually allows you to download uh, using some kind of hashtag for example you search for uh, prime minister uh, prime minister of india so you can download a lot many tweets uh, or 500 tweets for for this hashtag and then you can understand what people are uh, talking about so are they talking positively about the prime minister of india or they are talking about uh, prime minister of ne- uh, india in a negative sense this could be done with a very already uh, designed package called twipi so twipi is a very engaging uh, uh, package it will it will tell you that okay so in the last 500 tweets people have these kind of reviews and it is very important for uh, for large organizations to understand sentiments of their um, customers to to analyze or to create to curate uh, an advertisement that is specifically targeted to those audiences Yeah. So I don't know how much, how many of you are aware that uh, Chat GPT in the GPT that uh, that that stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformers. 
transformers is a kind of neural network architecture that was designed by google in back in 2018 it it came with uh, fancy new technological uh, advancement that uh, earlier models like bird or rnn or lstm were not able to capture so rnn when i say it's a, uh, it was it was very uh, small architecture where where if the if the uh, computer or the or the machine or the artificial intelligence unit is is reading a particular paragraph it would it would tend to forget uh, the uh, previous lines that it was taking into account but uh, the problem was solved by lstm which stands for long short term memory here uh, the information was shorted in a term so here uh, long short term memory doesn't stands uh, uh, doesn't reflects or doesn't uh, aligns with Uh, gajani movie it is uh, it is not some short term memory to- uh, that we are talking about it is shorting of the circuit that we are talking about how we are able to uh, move the information and the computer is able to process what has happened previously and it is able to predict what will come uh, in the future so gpt is another uh, form of uh, transformer that has been trained by open ai and uh, uh, open ai has been training this model since a very uh, since very long time they have uh, they have they are in the, in a phase now that they have implemented the research phase of that uh, uh, model where you can go on to uh, the website of chat gpt and you can you can query anything that you want so chat gpt works on a very simple model it uh, when you write a prompt when i say prompt it is a very simple uh, one liner sentence or maybe uh, some something that you want uh, your machine to understand right if if you have a large essay and you want to summarize it into uh, 10 bullet points you will go on to that chat gpt you will copy paste that essay and uh, write that i want this essay to be summarized into 10 bullet points so the chat gpt will essentially go through all the uh, all the contents or all each and every word of of the essay it will break down uh, the input text into a smaller chunks uh, that those are called tokens it will encode them and then it will try to make meaning of out, out of it this happens in just fraction of seconds so you will get the response in less than uh, few milliseconds i believe and uh, uh, how how uh, fascinating it is that uh, that a something something that doesn't have any relevance to whatever you are asking to it is able to process the data and give you answers so so quickly is completely mind blowing so transformers as i i was talking about works in a uh, in two dif- in in a two block uh, architecture one is called encoder and the other one is called decoder encoder is just uh, something that breaks down the words or uh, words or alphabets into smaller chunks or tokens and decoder is is something that tries to make meaning out of it so i have i have attached this uh, transformer model architecture so we will not be going into much detail of it but uh, the page the research paper that that was uh, uh, that was actually published by google it it was named that attention is all you need so uh, there is three core uh, concepts behind how a transformer is working first is functional encoding second is attention and third one is self attention it is it is uh, these three key breakthroughs that uh, transformer is able to grasp so much uh, so much of intelligence or so much of um, value that you want to you want your uh, machine to understand so functional uh, yeah so this has to be for functional encoding uh, functional encoding is nothing but just uh, putting numbers or giving an address to all the numbers that you have uh, you have in your sentence so let's say we have a very small sentence i love dogs i will just break it down into three parts and and uh, give numerical num- uh, numerical addresses to these particular words it will be like 1 2 3 1 will be i 2 uh, will be love and 3 will be dogs 
then then comes attention uh, attention is is a very uh, uh, is a peculiar uh, breakthrough that uh, researchers at google were able to uh, carry out this was how how a particular model can understand or weigh the uh, words so when when i talk about i love dogs a very easy way to understand how uh, attention works is to to understand which words have the real meaning into it or or the in the, in the whole sentence i love dogs which which words are the one which are expressing the sentence mostly so here in i love dogs love dogs is the is the uh, is the are the two words that actually have some implication or uh, uh, some, uh, some they are they are expressing some kind of um uh, love towards dogs so they th- those two words will be weighted higher uh, if you are if this these four blocks that i have attached in, on your screen these are uh, how a machine perceives these are heat maps of how uh two words are uh, correlated and attention is be uh, attention is uh, uh is uh, when we when we train the data or when when we train the model on large amount of data this is how the model captures that which word has to given more weightage on to then can then then comes self attention this is my favorite part so self attention is something when uh, a machine learns how to segregate the meaning of the words in the particular in that particular sentence itself so there is very uh, small difference between attention and self attention but uh, when i talk attention uh, it is basically in the uh, it it is uh, in the in the syntax in the context of all the universe or uh, words that are um, that has that are repeatedly used and ha- signify some kind of meaning to it but in self attention we just talk about those three uh, three words like i love dogs so here higher weights will be given to love dogs because again in this particular sentence it made more sense to to uh, give give more weight to love dogs uh, this this particular image that you see on your screen that i have generated via via an ai uh here this uh, singer of uh, you just want attention charlie put is is asking uh, is telling the robot that uh, you just want attention but uh, the robot he is casually replying that no i i want self attention as well right so uh, how i use chat gpt as a data scientist has uh, numerous implications i use it for my coding purpose i use for error debugging and also for understanding the concept to get deeper into it when i say coding i use uh, so ai has this limitation that it doesn't gives you the logic the logic or the understanding of what you are trying to implement is always limited to the human beings so when i have a problem i want to implement something i will go to chat gpt i will uh, i will write a prompt that okay i want to design this this uh, this task in on python that is able to grab these these things on uh, in this data set so i will just go and explain all this to chat gpt and it will it will essentially write a cer- certain context of uh, quotes that i may utilize for my uh, uh to code something uh, code my task that i have in hand but the best best uh, utilization of uh, uh, chat gpt in coding is to modularize uh, my codes so i might write my codes in a half a half hazard manner i can put each and everything here and there but i can paste that copy paste that particular line of code lines of code on chat gpt it will structure the codes in a manner that is uh modularized and it's very easy to understand it will even add comments and explain the user to how how a particular code is working the second implementation is error debugging uh error debugging uh, earlier we used to you uh, used to have stack overflow as our go to website for code errors but uh, to find the particular error that you are going through was a 
was a bit of a tedious task. Uh, every time uh, I encountered an error, I used to search it a, a lot over Google. I, I used to go to my seniors, have some kind of understanding why this error might be appearing. But now it has become very easy for me to uh, debug my uh, uh, debug my code. All I have to do is to copy paste that code lines and copy paste this uh, error message that I'm getting. And then ChatGPT will immediately tell me that, uh, okay boss, this this this, this might not be uh, right at uh, uh, in, in this part of the line or, or the code. And you would like to change the, uh, change the syntax or something like that. Everything would be uh, instantly replied. And, and understanding the concepts yeah this has actually uh, a lot has a lot of uh, large implications in my day-to-day -day life um, let me share my screen uh, so that i can go through how how i've been using right so for example i have this uh, machine learning algorithm called random forest with me using random forest is is something that uh, uh, that is uh, that is utilized every very uh, frequently in my day-to-day -day life but yeah topics like random forest are very complicated to understand you can watch these videos that are 30 minutes long or one hour long but it's a time consuming process what you can do is you can directly go to these videos without wasting any time you can uh, you can just uh, just for a second. I'm not find that transcript. So unfortunately, this video doesn't have any transcript in it. Uh, Yeah, so here, if you see, this is another video which has a show transcript option in it. You can you can easily copy paste all the transcripts that you can see over here. Copy it to that chat GPT. let's say summarize the above YouTube transcript sorry to interrupt Naman your yeah. screen is not visible is it? I think yeah, I'll have to share it yes it's visible now yeah so so you can you can open uh, any such youtube video you can go here in the three dot sections you can go to show transcript and you can just copy paste all the transcripts that you have then what you want to do is you you want to go to uh, chat gpt I hope it, this is visible. Yeah. And you want to uh, just copy paste all the transcript that you have and write down that, summarize the above YouTube transcript on random for this. In 10 bullet points, let's say. Sometimes chat GPT also hallucinates. Let me just write the same thing on the top.
Oh, now my chat GPT window is not showing. It's showing YouTube window. Yes, it's better now. It's okay. So I've just written that summarized by uh, below YouTube video. On random forest in ten bullet points. Let's see what ChatGPT replies. I'll remove this. So you see, immediately ChatGPT is able to grasp uh, what is what what the video is talking about and and is able to give ten broad uh, pointers on how you can. Uh, Uh, understand random follow that uh, that is talked uh, that is talked about in that particular video it's very interesting because uh, now you need not to go through all uh, all the length of the video and then uh, understand a particular topic you can just copy paste the transcript and paste it over uh, over chat gpt and it will do the heavy lifting for you Uh, I have been using to understand for my day-to-day uh, data science job. I encounter a lot of algorithms, statistics, um, uh, equations, or, or, or theories that I want to understand, and it is very uh, important for my task. Then what I do is I go to uh, YouTube, open any relevant video that I find has uh, uh, will be able to explain the topic, but properly, I uh, copy the transcript and put it over ChatGPT. Read the bullet points. It gives me a good refreshes in some kind, uh, some cases, and in uh, other cases, I, when I want to understand the topic, I just go through the topics, and that's that's all I want. Let me get back to my PPT again. Is it visible, um, Pooja? Yes, your PPT is visible. Right, guys. So we have already understood how ChatGPT, uh, uh, what's the core uh, technology that is working, how it is able to grab attention, how it is able to make meaning out of what we are writing it to it. and how i have been using it chat gpt as a data scientist but uh, i'm quite sure that a lot of you might be thinking that how how come ai has become so intelligent and uh, will it ever take over human kind uh, and is there anything we can do about it for those uh, people right you must have watched uh, terminator and uh, you might be thinking that judgment day is near or i robot will smith and uh, here uh, new robots from 2050 take over the world if if not these two then i'm quite sure that you might be aware of how uh, chitty from uh, rajni <laughs> rajni khan's movie was was uh, that went rogue and it tried to capture uh, capture the world but how how we can do it responsibly how we can design our artificial intelligence model in a way that it it, it doesn't goes beyond uh, the capabilities that we don't want it to be so we we always want it to be structured in a manner that uh, um, it doesn't goes beyond certain laws or regulations that we put our uh, that we put on our machines to uh, Learn and understand. Microsoft, Accenture, Google are the main are the biggest companies that are talking a lot about responsible AI. 
and I also want to put some uh, important stumps of how responsibly we can use AI. Um, so we, uh, there are uh, four stumps to it. Uh, I'll be talking in brief details about about them. First one is socially beneficial. The aim of uh, developing an AI AI model is to have an inclusive society. We don't want a particular model to understand, let's say, uh, white people more, or uh, we don't want a particular model to understand just how uh, a person, how a person, a normal uh, life of a Chinese does. We we want it to be in a way that it respects all the social, cultural, and legal norms of each particular areas. Uh, when I say areas, it could be a state or it could be a city, it could be a country as well. Um, it The AI has to be designed in a way that it inculcates the values and laws of uh, that particular uh, area. Second one is to avoid reinforcing unfair bias. Uh, biasness is one, one of the greatest uh, problem that we uh, encounter in day-to-day -day implementation of artificial intelligence. When I say biasness, biasness is about how we are training our uh, model. Training could be in multiple ways. For example, if I am designing, uh, uh, let's say, uh, I'm creating a certain model that uh, uh, that that works and that predicts uh, temperature for for coming days. So I don't want my model to be trained on uh, climate scenarios of uh, Siberia. If I do so, right, the model will be very biased towards Siberia itself. I won't be able to use that particular model in Indian scenarios. So uh, <laughs> for Indian scenarios, when when the model is predicting minus 40 degrees Celsius, it will be plus 40 or uh, uh, more than 40, de 40 degrees Celsius that we as an Indian, we are currently uh, facing heat waves all around us. And uh, it is uh, very much unlikely to get uh, such, such scenarios in front of us. A very uh, famous example of how uh, biasness could, could be in uh, in any of the model that we build is, is a Bindi incident at OPPO. Uh, this incident happened at OPPO where they designed a model that would essentially uh, enhance your beauty or uh, uh, reduces certain uh, black spots or uh, blemishes on your face. In the due course, it was trained in a way that it, it only understood how uh, uh, how uh, let's say an, an, an Australian lives or a, a, or a Chinese uh, lives into. It didn't uh, consider how an a Indian, Indian woman might be dressing. So uh, an Indian woman would, might, might be wearing a bindi. When, when they took uh, pictures of, of themselves, the AI, how it worked was it removed bindi from their forehead considering that it was a blemish on their face which 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 uh, uh, which was realized very soon and it was fixed by oppo but then this has actually uh, given a lot of light on how we shouldn't train our model or we shouldn't be uh, teaching our ai system that uh, that that th this is the um, this these are the definitions of beauty because beauty is is uh, uh, something that is very contextual to where you live, where you have culturally uh, nurtured yourself and all those things. Google started a project Bindi for the inclusion of diversity in their system and it is a thing as of now. The AI system must be accountable to people. It should, it should be uh, able to tell why and how it made that particular decision and why and how it can be fixed. A uh, very famous example comes in a form of Cambridge Analytica scandal that happened in 2018. And when it was discovered, it was discovered that uh, Donald Trump, the then president of USA, had used uh, AI or machine learning in a way that actually helped him 
to win uh, the elections of uh, us presidents so this this kind of uh, events kind of, uh, we we don't want these events to happen and it we have to design an ai system in a way that it always answers to people and there are certain criteria like gdpr that talks about how we should protect our data uh, there are certain norms to it and how uh, we can um, uh, regulate of uh, our data uh, data privacy um, it, the the, uh, the ads that you see on instagram like if you if you if you uh, search for anything on your app amazon account so soon you'll uh, discover that the same advertisements are coming across all the social media uh, when you open instagram uh, um, different website might be uh, giving you this offer that okay so you want to buy this let's uh, these are the new designs that we have then you go to facebook and then you realize that the same advertisement is coming there also this is actually related to your privacy and how the data has it is shared between all the apps it records each and every moment of you I, since i have worked, worked in an advertisement industry i actually know how how a particular advertisement industry uh, or company might be able to get your data and they are able to precisely tell what kind of uh, uh, shopping habits you have or what kind of uh, activities you are doing on uh, on your social media or or on online mediums like that equifax was a credit uh, reporting company who which, which actually had this uh, uh, which which actually didn't uh, abide by these gdpr regulations and in 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 the end they lost some massive amount of data and uh, uh, some 143 million individuals were affected by uh, the uh, these soft uh, these data loss their security numbers were shared their uh, pin numbers were shared and a lot of money was also uh, was lost in this incident yeah so guys that uh, uh, since we are running out of time i had a lot of uh, examples to share but i had to rush in a way that i am able to put the thoughts that i i think that are uh, actually required for example the res- or responsible ai part it is very uh, uh, it is very important for us to understand how ai works how chat gpt works but in the end we are masters of our own self we we don't want to trust anybody else to uh, to get something that we want in our life right so uh, we have come to an end um, you can search over instagram ai with naman and uh, there i am very active i will be replying to all your dms there College Dunya has recently launched this uh, fabulous course on data science, where you can get 32 weeks of uh, intensive training, soft skill development, and and you will be trained on some 10 tools and language programming. Uh, there are more than eight case studies and capstone projects that will be uh, that will be giving you exposure of how the industry works, and how how things move in corporate world, how. and what is particular skill set that you want to have to become a data scientist um they have curated a very uh, high performance coaching one to one coaching as well uh, they have personalized the mentorship in a way that it targets only small groups and each and every doubt of you will be uh, cleared immediately uh, pooja will be throwing more light on it um, yes thanks a lot naman so as naman discussed that we have a launch our program with nit patna where we have 200 plus hours uh, and one on one coaching session and we provide the complimentary placements also placement support and soft skills training and uh, here you will be uh, learn 10 plus tools and languages and more than 8 case studies and capstone projects and uh, to know more about our program you can visit the link which i have shared in the chat box and for the one on one counseling session you can fill out this form you can just copy uh, this link uh, in your google tab and then this link with work and uh, meanwhile if anyone has any doubts then they can ask their doubts or queries in the chat box yeah so uh, naman uh, 
few learners are asking like what is data scientist yeah, yeah, I'm yeah they want to know something about the data scientist and their uh, roles etc you can guide uh, them yeah so a data scientist is someone who um, takes into account of how a particular company has been performing over the years uh, just to give an example uh, if if the company gives me this data that uh, 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 we have uh, these three models in our company that uh, data car model basically and we want to predict how many of them we will be selling in coming uh, six months of time period a data science scientist would essentially go through the data understand how what how and what the pattern was in uh, uh, historically and will try to make sense in a way that is able to drive some revenue for that particular company understand help them understand how they can understand their own data and uh, also uh, a data scientist would like uh, would try to um, uh, give as much as as much information as as possible right i hope that answers your question yes perfectly perfectly answered naman so if any one of you having any more questions or queries you, we are happy to help you you can ask your queries in the chat box otherwise we can wrap this session now Uh, Himanshi is asking, can a biotechnologist became uh, become a data scientist? Yeah, yeah, Himanshi. Actually, this is a very good question, and yeah, definitely a biotechnologist can become a data scientist because data scientist is not uh, fixed to any particular stream or particular branch of uh, engineering or any any of the engineering. It is it has a lot of potential if you understand how a particular thing works. Um, for example, if you understand your your work field properly, right, you can you can become a data scientist very easy, very easily because you you understand what uh, uh, what is a, what is the work of a biotechnologist and how you can implement that uh, using using th this added on uh, skill set of uh, reading and analy analyzing data. So yeah, a biotechnologist can definitely become a data scientist. And Sagnik is asking one query in the chat box. You can check. It's related to uh, one of the main. Right. Yeah, yeah, I have also seen this meme, <laughs> Sagnik. So, uh, yeah. So that is that is something that uh, uh, that is why OpenAI is saying that ChatGPT is still into in research phase. They are also very afraid of how. Uh, they are training their data and how it will react to all the uh, prompts that uh, uh, that humans are currently providing it with. For the same reason, they have stopped training ChatGPT 5. Uh, they have already launched ChatGPT 4, but uh, ChatGPT 5 is not being trained because they want to collect all this information that is coming through all the mediums, and they will abide in a in a way that uh, ChatGPT cannot be fooled in in, uh, in future. So uh, that is a piracy uh, uh, scheme as of now, but yeah, uh, that uh, humans have taken a lot of steps to control all this. Uh, all this as of now, uh, you must be aware that ChatGPT three is only uh, trained till the year of twenty twenty one. It was intentionally did, done because we don't want uh, uh, this AI model to get all the information. Uh, how uh, of this world that we are currently living in? Yeah. I okay. So, uh, so Spadiga is asking: Will Chat Chat GPT be able to work on recent world updates? And is it true that the data is updated only till twenty twenty one? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Chat GPT they have limited the training period till twenty twenty one only. Uh, that is uh, again because of the, all the security reasons and how we want to control our own uh, uh, development of artificial intelligence is limited. Uh, another example is something that I had shared on my Instagram account yesterday, where uh, Sundar Pichai was talking about how 
we as a human being also doesn't understand how but how a particular model works uh, that part of uh, deep learning is called black box we actually don't understand it fully so when the interviewer asks sundar pichai that how can we implement such such a thing that we don't fully understand the answer was very uh, normal and a very very uh, sensible one it is like we don't understand our brain either right we don't understand each and everything of it we are just trying to replicate what happens on in, in our brain and similarly how how a particular model works in in the integrity is is something that we are also not aware of we can only define it using uh, continuous feedback that this is you are not doing right you will have to correct it this way so as the question was asked previously um uh, we have trained the data till 2021 only because till then only we can be able to uh, suggest that uh, this this question this prompt is something that uh, that is not like uh, that you shouldn't be answer or the torrent websites that uh, that that chatgpt replied to that shouldn't have been done that's part of training Okay, so Mr. Ramani is asking, can NLP be used in gaming? So NLP is um, is more relevant to uh, how we speak or how we hear. It is not relevant to gaming, as per my understanding. I'm quite sure that there might be. uh there could be some applications where the uh where we want to have the simulations of characters right uh, so for example um uh, in, in in a particular game there is a, there is a character that that is speaking to us it can actually uh, it it can be actually implemented that if you talk to it directly it will reply intelligently to you that's one uh, nlp implementation that i uh, see other than that i don't believe that uh, nlp could be directly implemented into games okay so sarnik is asking can chat gpt unearth anything that is not there on the internet for example files on conspiracy theories like aliens or subhash uh, subhash chandra bose so chat gpt might give you some replies given its understanding but again uh, we we, can, we cannot take chat gpt as a human it is not aware about how how and what uh, world we are living into it just relates to the world in in form of words as i talked about attention it just understand that particular words and weightage it has in its model so uh, if we use conspiracy and all these heavy terms so it might re- relate to all the conspiracy that uh, subhash and bose might have encountered or something that is o- available over internet but it will not be able to give you uh, an answer that is that is correct or truth or or maybe uh, it can be said that uh, you can um, uh, you can trust on so so it cannot be trusted i would say okay so uh, purnima is asking can we use chat gpt for research papers yeah definitely so uh, uh, while writing research papers uh, you will have to go through a lot of articles and uh, a lot of uh, videos to understand what uh, how the world has already progressed to understand these topics as i showed you a, a demo of how i use chat gpt as a data scientist you can go th- uh, go to youtube and download that transcript and summarize it for your own that will save a lot of time for you similarly a lot of articles are available you can you can just copy paste and uh, uh, ask it to summarize for you or maybe once you have the uh, main bullet points jotted down for yourself you can ask chat gpt to write it for you so uh, the prompt would be something like that you imagine imagine that you are this character um, you want uh, to write a research paper on this particular topic and these are the 10 points that you want to include in your uh, in, in the research paper 
so chat gpt will uh, essentially uh, create this ar- uh, architecture for you where you can edit or you can play around uh, so that uh, you can you can publish your research paper okay so sneha is asking does chat gpt result in plagiarism Yeah. Uh, so, plagiarism is something um, comes into play when you have copy pasted something. But if you have researched something, all right, if you have uh, your own breakthrough uh, research going on, then you only understand it. it nobody, uh, it is nobody else who is who is able to grasp what you are trying to do. Definitely, if you are copy pasting somebody else's work. it's a plagiarism but if you are taking knowledge from internet and you are putting your thoughts in a way that it creates an, another uh, point of research then it's not plagiarism okay so shubhojit is asking how chat gpt can help a business development or a sales professional so um, there are numer- numerous applications of chat gpt that ha- that are surfacing as of now so uh, i'm not sure how uh, a sales professional might uh, directly benefit from it but i have seen this uh, application where google has introduced their interview bot so now you can you can directly uh, practice your interviews it will ask you questions and you can directly answer to it uh, similar similar kind of uh, uh, models might be existent or or tools might be existing existent on internet where you can go and practice your sales pitch it will tell you where the portions you can correct uh, or or how you can improve your intellect your skill so that is the way that is that in a way uh, chat gpt might be able to help but yeah i have not seen any application as till now good startup idea okay so i'm believe uh, everyone is asking that chat gpt can solve now yeah Uh, if anyone is having any another doubt, then they can ask in the chat box. Right. So uh, I believe everyone uh, queries has been resolved now. So thank you so much, uh, Naman, for such an enlightening and insightful session. And I would also like to thank our audience. And I can see a lot of attendees who has joined. Thank you for joining us. Mm-hmm.